Hello everybody, and welcome back to LMM. I suppose you're thinking, Laurie, A, what are you doing wearing a suit, and how dashing you look, and why thank you very much, I'm thinking I look quite dashing too, and B, why are you at a bus station at half past six in the morning? Which one of your vehicles broke up? Well, none. I'm off on an adventure, particularly a bus-related adventure, so it's important to start the day with a bus. But not that one. And also, not that one. Nor was it that one. I'll be honest, by this point, the bus should have been here 20 minutes ago, and I was starting to get a bit nervous. And just as I phoned the company, this arrived. What's the name? Oh. <laughs> and off we headed out of Colchester and away from Suffolk. I'll be honest, it was quite plush and also completely abandoned. And then the weather changed and it became a really miserable day and I was quite happy to be indoors. So where was I going, I hear you ask? Well, the answer is here. I'm at the MEC in Birmingham for Eurobus Expo, which means there's lots of buses. And I don't know what you're thinking. Laurie, this doesn't seem like the normal place for you to be. And it's just a place where a YouTuber like yourself should be. And my answer is, well, no, I got invited to come along with a company. I'm an honorary employee today, but shh, don't tell them that. Anyway, so let's have a look around, look at some of these buses and see if there's anything interesting. Have you ever wondered what a bus looks like totally naked? This is the video answer. Now, for those of you who aren't sure, that would be your driving area, which, while you see, hangs rather alarmingly out the front, suspended by nothing. This is an electric bus, so those are the batteries down there that power the entire bus. And, um, yes, seat, control area, all these magical things floating about here. Down here, this is a wheel with airbag suspension. Then obviously the advantage of an electric vehicle is this totally flat chassis with battery banks back there. Uh, I believe over there is the, what it looks like if it's fully dressed. I don't know what any of that does. And this was unveiled in some ceremony that we missed. Now I think that previously these had an actual proper internal combustion engine and this one has been remade to be entirely electric as you can see on the side. If I had just turned maybe 90 degrees that way I'd have seen all this which tells me everything I need to know. It tells me that they do indeed re-engine things and make them electric and funnily enough there is the bus which is over there doing its thing since they re-electrified it and did its thing. So that's what it is. It's an electric bus. I feel like this one is either trying to say that it's green and eco-friendly or it's got active camouflage on it, and it would be great if you were using it in the woods. I think it's an army bus. I feel that this bus used to be longer, and then was put into a, a car crusher, and made shorter, and they stopped halfway through the procedure. Which is not pretty, by any way. Now there's quite a few of these smaller minibus type vehicles, of which my main thought, honestly, is when you look at them, these would be brilliant to be turned into mini camper vans. They're bigger than your traditional camper van, lots of space, very good. To... Oh my dear God, what is that? The E Shuttle, okay. That is the single ugliest front end to a bus I've ever seen. That's awful. I wonder if it's bad inside. The silly floor that I hate in every bus. For a big open vehicle, this is a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. Climb up into the driver's compartment, which is strange. Quite like the elevated driving position. Look at all the buttons. Horrible digi dash, and I don't like many more buttons. I don't like cameras as mirrors, then I just don't like them. I also don't like the fact that it looks like it used to have buttons there, so probably one, two, three, which have disappeared, so it's just got that now. Oh, that's useful, it's got a go to home button, so at the end of the day, you press that, and like a drone, it just goes back to where it started. That genuinely may be one of the most ugly buttons. No, I'll take it back, it's probably that one. That's, that's possibly the most ugly one right there. Let's go have a look at that, because that's equally horrendous. 
what is it with horrendously ugly small buses? This one, obviously, again, started off being a much longer bus, which ended up in a trash compactor and is now a short bus. Zero emissions, zero compromise on everything apart from the looks, in which case the looks were hugely compromised. Let's have a look. So it does have a decent floor rather than this silly wood. The seats look quite nice, actually. They're all leathery. Disappointing. It is digital screen that tells me many things that I don't need to know. Worse, though, is it's a tablet for all of your buttons. Why would you have a tablet for this? Why can't, what's wrong with actual physical buttons rather than a touch screen with, oh, I can sunshade down. It doesn't work. Sunshade down. Oh, it does. There we go. That shows my problem with touch screen. I had to press it twice to actually make it do what it wants to do. Four presses and it's recognised it twice. Give me a button, an actual working button, not this tat. Who wants this tat? Oh, and it's also got, it's got parking brakes stolen off a car. It doesn't even have proper air brakes. What's wrong with good old fashioned air brakes? Oh, the future's, the future's awful. So moving away from the world's most ugly vehicle to the slightly less ugly one. As soon as it's got the axle behind the drivers, that actually doesn't look so bad. So we'll go and have a little gander. Oh, sorry. And the thing that surprised me again with this is it's all of that. That's kind of cool. Again. I hate the fact it's all like that. <laughs> Awful. Defroster. Ooh. Just a little colour. That's kind of cool. I like the fact it works. Also has things like the proper brake, which I like. Don't like the digi dash though. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, it's like this is very unique. It's like a Tesla. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do not like that. Apparently you can spec that to be glass rather than metal because that's nasty and I I assume batteries live under there because that's quite a step up. Quite a material though. And all the cool things. Oh, Ooh, this is nice. Oh, it looks very swanky. And also, unlike some of the other stuff, the uh, top lighting over here. Oh, look at that shiny roof. It's all quite nice. This is really quite swanky. I like the fact that the blinding lights don't actually blind me on this one. And also, what else do we have? And proper dials on the dash. Oh, what a wonderful thing. And a wonderful, wonderful collection of buttons. I like this, this is good. I'm amazed at the difference in some of these buses and coaches I, between some of them are very, very different in design and everything. That looks proper stylish and cool as well. I like that a lot. Do you know what? I actually really like that. Plenty of storage space. It's got a nice kind of futury looking thing, so it looks futuristic without being awful. Nicer shadow glass. The wheels look silly on it though because they're too small, but actually, I like that. That's cool. So from this one, we go to here, which has courtesy step. Ooh. Ooh. And has wood floor again, because I don't know what it is. Everyone's got nice plush seats though. No pretty stuff on the roof though, that's disappointing. This is quite plush. I like this. Look at that. Dials. Proper dials. Appreciate that. Don't like that, that's horrible. Pretty automatic. Uh, we have this, which is the IE tram, which is interesting in everything. It has wheel covers over it. It's a weird shape, and most interestingly, it's got this glass along the side, which is very strange. But we'll have a, a wander onto it. Again, fake wooden floor, which I hate. Do like the glass. Really hate these USB charger things stuck in the outside. Why they're not on the wall, I don't know. The rest of it, seats look really nice. It's really, really nice and light and airy in here. I'm impressed with that much. I've mentioned these side windows on it, and my friend who drives buses mentioned those, and I've just heard another group of people, and then earlier I heard another group of people talking about these low-down side windows, which will, I quote, be done in within a week of it being on the road. I do tend to agree, they do seem a bit vulnerable. However, chatting to the guys on board about it, because we were saying we're worried about kind of 
the fact they're low down, the fact that people could potentially look up uh, people's clothing on it. And they went, oh, actually, we've heard a lot of positive praise about it, and the operator who is currently using this really likes it, or the operator who is going to be using this, because it's the prototype. So they really like it, and they like the idea that kids can look out, and it will make kids enjoy being on a bus. So time will tell what happens with that. They've also said the horrible USB bits on it are going to be changed. That was the top of the list. Very interesting. It's got really tiny wheels. It's kind of a little bit weird compared to the rest of it. Oh, right. Let's go on and have a look. Things I really don't like. Luggage is up here. And these running lights across here are totally at my eye level. Completely and utterly blinding when you're trying to load up. Now it might just be my height, but I think I'm about standard and normal height, and that is not so good. But from that, the seats are very flush. You put your handbrake on and you're trying to change that. You catch How are that handbrake. You have to get out your seat to change the destination blind on that. Oh, but I pray what it does have that I do like, that nothing else has. It has got proper dials on the dash, and I like proper dials. Proper old school dials, not this modern rubbish of a TV screen. Mm. Should we give them the feedback? Oh, we're going to go tell them we don't like it. Well, that, my friends, is hideous. I've never seen the. I don't know what it is on the front. The, the speaker? The, I don't know, snorkel perhaps? Ah, I think it's a snorkel. I think they built that on it, so actually it can go off-roading and ford through rivers. So it's possibly amphibious, because that would make total sense, because otherwise I can't understand what that is. It looks absolutely... It looks like somebody's fitted it over. It's like armour that's been put on it. It's hideous. Of course, what it actually is for is for those yeah. silly cameras up there. I'm still scared, you know. Which I don't like at all. But, yeah. Aesthetically... Awful. What is it with you every single bus has the the this silly floor? Oh. Oh, that's so disgusting. That looks cheap and nasty and doesn't have anything. Every bus I've got on so far has this silly floor. Oh, they're quite cool though. They're nifty, they're sporty seats. Several of the vehicles we've looked at throughout this are electric, as in this the switch, which was Opar Solo, which is now going to be the E2 and I think another oh, E1's over that side. Now, we went, I've chatted to several of the operators and spoke about the buses and like the future of where buses are going. And particularly like things like this, being fully electric, work very well for being in the towns, cities, and light urban runs. However, there are operators around who do things differently, who are constantly working on our back to front when we've got very little downtime and no time to charge an electric vehicle with routes that exceed the range of this. And a lot of the companies around here have given us kind of excuses and reasons and things like oh well you have a fast charger where you take your brake and you put it on fast charge and this and that these guys just went yeah our buses won't do that and I really admire the honesty and the upfront about it of going we're working to make electric buses which do this and we're going to do it to the best of what we can do but for certain routes we know that these will not be suitable and out of everybody we've spoken to around here it was these guys who gave us the most truthful and upfront answer and I really appreciate that so um we also, a friend of mine is a bus driver on the Optair Solar, which is that thing, and has several comments about how horrible it is to drive, and talked to the designers, and they were really good and took stuff on board and sat in the seat and saw his concerns and everything. And so, yeah, massive shout out to these guys, because genuinely impressed out. Everyone here, these guys seem to listen and have an idea of what they're doing and what they will and won't be able to do more than a lot of other companies. So, was impressed. Proper dials. See, that's what I like. Proper dials on a proper bus. I like that. It's quite, and, it, and also, proper floor, not some of this stupid wood stuff. Now, I know very little about buses, but I know Van Hu are a good maker. And that's all very nicely laid out, apart from... Mm, automatic buttons, which I don't like. I don't understand this. Now, I do understand a automatic transmission, but I don't understand why you need to donate this much space to it. You know, all of this, all this quite nicely laid out with dials, 
buffs and switch gear there. And this looks like there's lots of places that you could quite happily stick that, but they haven't. However, look how plush this is. I like this, and no stupid strip lighting right at eye level. This one's even got tables with drink holders, which is awesome. And most importantly, it's got a kitchenette area. It's been damaged. All right. But then, this is awesome. It's, everything's got the little Van Hu logo on it. I like that. Oh, this just feels like premium product. I like this a lot. And no silly woody bits on it either. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely awesome. Actually, if modern things go, I like that. And that could well be because I'm a sucker for yellow. But that's really good. I, that looks quite smart. Everybody's looking at it. It's obviously made by a good company because it's Alexander Dennis, and obviously Dennis ties into fire engines. And uh, I don't like the Digi Dash. It just does not excite me at all. I know everyone's going with that. And oh my, no, no, that's an electric handbrake, no air brake handbrake. And I really don't like those either. They're, they're just. Give me mirrors, you know, that work rather than fancy electronics that go wrong. Zero emissions, yes. I like this. Again, weird floor choice that's meant to look eco-friendly and everything, but all the chairs are cool. They're retro, they're kind of cool. They're bright, it's very inviting up here. There's even got sunroofs. And sunroofs make everything cool. How long it will stay a sunroof and doesn't come opaque with rubbish, because I don't know how many people can clear up here and keep it clean, remains to be seen. But I do like the window in the side down there. And I like the view of the other things. This is cool. I'm going to go tell them they make good fire engines back in the day. I think the thing that's shown me that the world is changing more than anything else in this entire show, because most of the buses here are, in fact, electric, is the fact that this has little USB chargers here for when you're standing. Most buses we've seen have got things down there where you can plug in when you're sat down, but have one so you can plug in as you're standing. The world is definitely a changing place. This one, we went round the back to have a look at the gubbins inside, and it has some things that I'd never thought of before, like this coolant for the motors and for the battery. Internal combustion I can understand, this I haven't got a clue about. And then we went to see a show. <laughs> oh, this is trick. We are at Alexander Dennis. Absolutely everything we do is focused on delivering products and Starting our journey. Where's the fire engines? That's my question. It's just showing the buses. It's not showing the good stuff. The buses, like the fire engines. That's good. I like that. Show me more old stuff, please. Everything at this show is very much about the future of buses and transportation, and on that, electric vehicles. We're talking about the next generation electric vehicles, next generation batteries, and everything. To the point that I'm getting quite sick of it because I like internal combustion. And I do accept that electric makes sense for cities and things, but there doesn't seem to be many alternatives for those who aren't operating within cities. Yes, there are big range batteries for long range buses, but they're not for all day operation for operators who literally just travel around the country or whatever. Things I really hate though are things like that. That is not a real tree. That is a fake tree, a fake bit of greenery which kind of highlights the whole thing. A lot of these companies are really pushing the fact that they are green, eco-friendly, 100% carbon emission clear. And you're like, yeah, but they're not. They're quite damaging to build. They generally have a shorter lifespan than an internal combustion vehicle. And when they do go wrong, the batteries go wrong, they're a lot more expensive to replace. And so stuff like that, I just feel like we're all chasing this fake ideal, which we haven't really have yet. And I accept this is the future, certainly. But at least put a real tree in here, for God's sake. Now one of the things that I have noticed is a load of the design here is all very similar. It's all this kind of rounded, super modern stuff, as you'd expect for... I found my favourite. Let's go look at that. Now as buses go at this show that I'd like to buy and own, this 100% is a bus I'd like to buy and own. Look at that. This. 
Is it an AC? It is an AC. It's a Regent. Oh. See, this, this is better. This is much better. There are things I enjoy about this. A, the sheer amount of work that's gone into it. Secondly, the gearbox is crash. Just a crash box. Look at this. Oh, yeah, no, this, this is a machine I can get behind. Look at this. See, this is how buses should be. I don't understand why anybody else would do anything else. Do I have, where are these, these? What does this do? I have windows that you can open and shut with handles on all of those. Yeah, that's good. Headroom may be a little limited, I know. Small, but oh, the condition of this is glorious. Look at the beautiful bulbs. All the varnish woodwork, proper wood, not fake wood like so many of the other ones. Oh, a nice little cubby hole. Also, my favourite thing about the entire bus is they're rather sneakily handing these out. These are the innovation award for the most innovative vehicle here. And they're like, vote for us. I'm like, yes, yes I will. We will vote for this being the most innovative vehicle here. Because this is perfect. This is the vehicle I'd want to get on and travel to work or to pleasure or to whatever every day. Because this, this is glorious. What a top notch job. This is best in show, absolutely. Best in show. No USB charging on this and no fake wooden floor. This is quality. Oh, this fellow is, look at that lovely little curved glass there. Lovely handrails around. Oh, this is perfect. Look at that. It's channeling there so the rain doesn't drip on you. And then it goes down its own little bit of guttering. What a quality bit of design. Everywhere has food. That looks really pretty. What is pretty depressing is pretty much everything here is electric. This, no doubt, as we walk around here, there'll be a battery bank under. It runs on liquid dinosaur. Proper engine. So nice to see a proper engine. Oh, I like this coach because it's proper. I'm loving all of this. Go places, eat food. I thought I was going to have to buy lunch today, but no. Do I think I could jump into there and be okay? But what is that? Are you the future? No, because it's about to drive into that and be washed. The robot uprising was particularly unexpected, particularly from the source that it came from. This is the face of your destroyer. This is the start of Skynet, right there. It's got a face on it. Any minute now that's going to turn red and angry and everyone's going to start running. <laughs> I assume that's when it's about to take over the world. It's got its own name, it's called George. We haven't been told the name of the guy who's using it, we've just been told that this is George and we must call it George. So they've just shown us walking around this and mapping out the area they want it to clean and it's now decided that this is where it's going to go clean. And you can see on board, there's the area it's been asked to clean and all the things that it's seeing around it. That is genuinely awesome. Apparently the larger model in the range, if you get too close to it, it growls at you to get out of the way. So happy, look at it go! After all that excitement, we went back to the Volvo stand and got some more food. Yeah. Some buses are really going the extra mile to tell you that they're green and carbon neutral. This one has in the entirety of the inside having the very popular wooden style floor and green everywhere to let you know this is a green eco-friendly device including there telling you it saves 56 tons of co2 a year that's 5,000 trees very very not a bad cab i suppose but it has horrible digital dash again but it does have a proper brake and i like that oh and a big red kill switch i don't know why that does but i want that there are a couple of things i like about this particular model firstly Two year warranty, five year on the drive, eight year on the battery. That's quite good. Secondly, max speed, kilometers per hour of 2,550. That's not a dot. So it has 
a insane top speed. So I believe the speed of sound is about 1,350 kilometers per hour, something like that. So this bus here is supersonic over the speed of sound, breaking the sound barrier. It doesn't look it, but supersonic bus. Obviously the information on the card wouldn't be incorrect. No, 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 must be correct. So the fastest vehicle here by quite some margin. This is striking. That's really striking. Let's go have a gander on that. It's a Lycan Scandia. Pop dials. Oh, this is, is this for kids again? Being three by two? They do look quite small. Again, lighting up there so it doesn't reflect in my eyes. And a floor that isn't wood. This is fine, I can live with this. An emergency escape. Yes, I know it's real. Love a Scania. Also, dials like that. Do not like, however, the sheer amount of unspec options on there. That's just, looks ugly. Oh, there's a, a man. I do like getting inside a man. Sometimes you just have to get inside a man. Ooh, this actually feels very nice. Ooh, this feels really like almost jetliner in its thing. And apart from the fact the floor goes down there and then comes back up. That's, you can't see it on camera, but it's raising up there and it raises up there. This is a low point in the middle and that just feels really strange. How's the toiletto? Let's have a look at the toiletto, shall we? Toiletto. Oh, that's not bad. Obviously never been used. Oh. That is not the most luxurious place, is it? <laughs> it's what you want, really, isn't it? You want a proper thing. Three axle. Well, you heard of the Leyland Leopard. This is the Paxton Leopard. Probably no relation. The thing I am most impressed about is the fact that down there you can just make out that it's sat on jacks. It's not actually on its own. They've put this thing up on jacks. Presumably, the yeah, air suspension's a bit leaking. Anyway, let's have a gander on this one, the Volvo. Oh my God, it's like a Christmas wonderland. Oh, is this just a special Christmas livery just for people who want to come on for a Christmas excursion? My God, it's uh, bright. I feel all Christmassy now. Deck the holes with some, yeah stuff. So this layout is a school's layout because the seats are five abreast, three and two, which uh, you can fit little people in, but not standard adults. So that's what it is, and it's weird theme. Ooh, controls. See, if you're going to have an automatic, you just want to have a clear position here for the driver. We do at least have a proper brake there. Oh, proper dials. I pressure that. That actual buttons. Yeah, this this is quite good. I like this. This one also has some of the weirdest features I've seen. Down here, you'll see there is a control for the mirror. One there, and one there. So there is a control for that mirror, but also a control for that mirror. Rather than having one control which you can flip between the two, this one just has two completely separate units, which I think is weird. You know you have 100% faith in your product when you're prepared to bring it to a show like this, have it jacked up in the air and flying about for the public to see, and you're going, I'm happy with that. Now, obviously, if you have a product like this, you have to be 100% certain that it's never going to drop anything. But also just the whole, yep, you're going to be here, the public can look around it, mill around. Yeah, quite impressive. I need one of these, these would be great to pick up the fire engine. What an amazingly large piece of kit. I'm impressed with that. There were all kinds of products on display, from different kinds of motors that power buses to the different seats that you can get for your drivers. Every conceivable thing to do with buses was here, from uniforms to finance for buying new buses. There's an Iveco, and the thing I like most about this Iveco is A, it's a good size vehicle to turn into a camper, but also they painted the logo and everything orange, which makes it kind of stand out quite nicely. Proper handbrake. Ooh, nice seat. Nice dash, apart from the fact it's all carbon fiber wrap, which is actually the tacky ass. Seats though are nice. Oh, oh, that's comfortable. It's just quite nice, I have this. I like the It doesn't feel like a bus, it feels like I'm actually in a club, especially with the flash bit at the top. All I just now need is the bass drum. 
That's 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 how I feel about this. It's it's a chav bus. That's what this is. It is a chav bus. I like that. There's also this a really hideous looking Scania. And generally I like Scania, but the front end of that is just awful. Well, apart from that, let's have a, a quick gander on board. It's, everything today seems to have this silly wood. And I am not a fan of this silly wood. It's quite dark in here as well. The dark wood and the dark leather seats make the whole thing look quite dark. And even with the lighting up there, it feels quite restrictive. I, I don't like this. This, this, is, this is not particularly good. It proudly says it's the new generation, and I want the last generation, in fact, the last generation before that, before that, before that. This Scania, again, it says it is the new generation, and this one, I'll accept. This looks futuristic, kind of cool. Angry headlights, which I don't really think suits it, but it is three axle, which is kind of cool. Yeah, that, that, that's fine. And over here, we have another chassis. Now, this one is fundamentally flawed from construction because they've built the driving bit on the wrong side. You see, it should be over here, and they've got it over there. But it is a good example of how the chassis can be used to extend and do different things by moving this thing here. Because you see, that bit there is the body on which stuff goes, and the rear axle there and the front axle are totally not connected. And I think that's actually quite nifty. So you can build this and be spec to exactly what you need it, and then your batteries and all the gubbins live back there. Now, I think as things go, modular designs like that are actually going to be the way forward because that's how you're going to make client-specific vehicles. And then, obviously, you send your vehicle of a particular length to a bodybuilder, you know, someone like Van Hool, and they'll stick a body on it. It's kind of cool. How do I know which one's mine? And so, that brings us to the end of the day here at the NEC at the bus, Euro Bus Expo. And I think, yeah, it's been quite good fun. I've enjoyed it. It's been very different, something unusual for me. And so now I just have to work out which one of these many buses behind me is the bus I need to go home. So if you have enjoyed this video, how about giving this video a like, maybe subscribing, and of course there's a couple of bus-related videos coming up on the screen now if you've enjoyed this kind of content. Let us know if you have, let us know what your favourite bus was, and with that, I'll see you later. Sure, guys. Bye.